I have this ASRock B450 M Pro 4 motherboard that I am not using right now. I also have the spare Ryzen 3 2200G with built-in graphics and the CPU cooler that came with it. I have some spare RAM that I can use and I have a spare M.2 drive. Here's a 600 watt power supply that's just sitting around. With all these spare parts, I should build another computer. So that's what I'm gonna do coming up on Thrifty AV. There's one thing I needed for my build that I did not have already and that was a case. So I found this DIY case on Newegg. There's two fans built into it. It has the right form factor for my motherboard and the right price for my budget. So I'm gonna be using this case for my build. Let's get started. Let's put this thing together. There's something very satisfying about seating a processor in one of these sockets. And there it is. Let's do the M.2 drive next. I'm consulting the book regarding RAM so I can take full advantage of the dual channel. So I will need to install into this slot and this slot. I'm running really low on thermal compound here. That should be more than adequate though. I think I'll go this way with it. Okay, everything's good and snug. All right, let's get into this case. tighten that down. This would probably look a little better with black screws back here, but I'm going to use what I can find. If this were a regular ATX case, I would probably prefer that the power supply be mounted on the bottom. I want to be able to fit my uh, expansion cards down here at the bottom. So it's better to have the power supply at the top on a micro ATX case. As I mentioned, there's already a case fan built in. Okay, I'm now gonna slide in this back plate. Somewhat snug fit, but it's in there. I have six standoffs on this case. I wanna make sure they match the holes on this ATX motherboard. This motherboard's deep enough that I wanna go ahead and add a standoff here and a standoff here. This five millimeter socket will do the trick for tightening down those standoffs. Will this fit? Make sure that I'm not covered up any of my leads all right just like it was designed to go in there my standoffs are landing in the right spot so that side's good time to screw this thing down Really? I was having trouble with all the standoffs that came with this case. I don't know if they were poorly machined or they're a non-standard size, but they won't even fit into each other. Even these screws that came with this case do not fit into these standoffs. I have a few standoffs that I've saved over the years. I've replaced all the standoffs in this case with standoffs that I know will work. 
Let's go ahead and put the motherboard back in and see if I can screw it down this time. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the CPU fan while this is easy access. Alright, let's screw down this motherboard. Let's start with this corner. Oh, now the screws are going in just like they're supposed to. It's going to take a stubby screwdriver to reach these back ones. This power supply has a semi-modular design. Uh, the main power to the motherboard is not modular, but everything else is. So I'm going to go ahead and hook this up. All right, so I have these clipped in here. I have these clipped in back here where it's hard to see because it's so dark. Windows 10 is already on this M.2 drive from a previous install. Now I want to hook up the two fans that were built into this case. I'm going to power off of the motherboard, not off of the power supply for this fan. So I need to find a fan header and I see one handy right here. And the fan coming off the front has the same options. I can power from the power supply or I can power from the motherboard. I'm going to go with a motherboard connection. So I need to find another fan header. Got some fan headers down here. I'm wondering if I could take this plate off and that'll help me get to some other stuff. I should have done that several steps ago. Now I want to plug in my USB 3, which is keyed, makes it hard to do that wrong. Some of these motherboards have uh, a little thing that you can plug all these into and then plug that onto the motherboard. I didn't see a multi-connector for the various power and LED leads, so I'll just hook these up individually onto the board. I did find a diagram. That's going to help me hook these connectors up. This came with a speaker, so I'm going to go ahead and hook the speaker up. Last two front panel connections are the HD audio and the USB 2. Okay, so I got my HD audio hooked up. I got my front USB hooked up. I got all the LEDs and power switches hooked up. I got my power supply hooked up. The next thing I want to check is does this machine power up? So let's plug it in and see what we got. I have this monitor hooked up via HDMI, I have this keyboard hooked up via USB, and this mouse hooked up via USB. I've gone into the system setup, and it is only seeing one stick of my RAM. It's only seeing the stick that's in DDR4B2. I have another stick plugged into DDR4A2. So I'm going to test that one stick out and see if I can figure out what's going on here. I've tried this single stick of a Vexor budget series RAM in all four slots. It would not do anything in any of them. Now I have this crucial RAM that runs at the same speed and it's the same capacity. I'm going to try plugging it into DDR4A2. I don't know if dual channel is going to work though because this is not a match with this and you're supposed to match your RAM in order to use a uh, dual channel. But I'll just see if it works, see what happens. Well, even though the RAM was mismatched, I still achieved dual channel memory mode at 2133. So I'm happy about that. 
I'm gonna write a little note on this that it wasn't working with this machine just in case I try to use this RAM again. I'm not gonna try to return it, it was an eBay purchase. It worked for a little while on a different machine. Everything checked out on the BIOS, I'm now in Windows. I'm gonna uninstall some programs that are not licensed for multiple machines that I have on my other Windows machine. Now it's time to do a little cable management in here put the case back together and hook it up to my entertainment center. I want to see how it does on my 4K TV. I placed my computer on a shelf on my entertainment center. I have my computer hooked up to the TV set. I have it playing YouTube and there's a few things that I find disappointing. One is that the edges of my uh, screen are chopped off. I don't see my taskbar. I don't see the very left edge or the very top edge or the very right edge of my screen. Another thing is the HDMI does not seem to be sending audio to my TV set, just video. So I would probably have to uh, use the analog outputs on this uh, computer if I wanted to send audio to my TV set. And third, it's only 1080p. This is a 4K screen and I want my a uh, computer, my entertainment computer to have 4K capability. Uh, if this thing can only do 1080p, that's not enough for me. This will not be my entertainment PC. Well, my experiment hooking this computer up as a multimedia PC on my entertainment center was a disappointment. So I hooked it back up to this Hitachi and now I am getting audio through the HDMI, so it's probably a settings issue on my entertainment center. That being said, the fact that it only outputs 1080p maximum is a disappointment and the edges of the windows disappearing, not being visible is a functionality problem. I can't see my start menu. I can't see my taskbar. So I can't really use it on my entertainment center like I want to. Uh, so now my question is, what do I do with this PC that I built? Uh, should I build a Linux box out of it? Should I uh, have some second gaming rig that I use it for? I tell you what, why don't y'all, my viewers, tell me what I should do with this box and I'll definitely consider it because I have a box here that I don't have any use for right now and I could uh, definitely find a use for a working PC here. If you enjoyed this video, thank you for viewing it and thank you to my subscribers. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel and remember, stay thrifty everyone.